Hey guys, how's it going? Um, wanted to create a, a quick little video here because I've now had two or three of you guys ask me the same question, which is common. It's a question that comes up every year, uh, but it's one that I like to answer to the whole class. Uh, and so I've given them short answers, but I've promised a longer answer is coming. This is the longer answer that's coming. So um, the question is just this. Hey, sir, I'm a first year student now, but I'd really like to get involved in ongoing research uh, that may be happening on campus. How can I do that? How can I become involved in research? Um, so first of all, I think it's very cool that, that people want to get involved in research. Um, that's fantastic. But I also want you to kind of understand how that does work at UT Scarborough, some of the barriers, but also some of the things you can be doing anytime. So first of all, um, let me say, Often it's hard to get involved in research until your third year, um, somewhere around your third year. Uh, why? Well, for a couple of reasons. Um, actually, I'm going to back up a little bit. <laughs> Let me back up and just say the following. When we think of each lab, so almost every professor that teaches you has a lab uh, at some point where they do research. And Every professor runs their lab. You can almost think of it as a, you know, a family or a household where the professor is the head of that household. And every professor can kind of run their house, run their lab, however they think is best. And so before I give you any you know, specific notions of this is how it works, I want to be clear that my this is how it works is a loose this is how it works. Um, it works a little differently in different labs and sometimes you can kind of use that to your advantage. So I'm going to tell you in general how it works and I'll touch on some of these other points as we go. So in general then, we don't usually accept students till third year and, and that's for a couple of reasons. One is we really like students to have taken some courses that have them ready to be doing research, specifically an experimental design course something like B01, but there's a there's a couple of issues in psych, BSY, B01, um, and an introductory statistics course of some sort, sort of, for example, like B07. Um, the idea is just this, you know, when you get into a lab, two of the major things you're going to have to help with is designing experiments. You, you'll have a question you want to answer and you have to figure out how do we create an experiment to answer that question. The experimental design course is all about that, teaching you how certain designs are, are more appropriate to answer certain kinds of questions. And so if you have that knowledge and you can bring it to the lab, you know, you're, you're ready on that front. Um, and now, of course, you, you run the experiment and you end up with a bunch of data, a bunch of numbers. Statistics courses teach you how to go from those numbers to an answer to the question, right? So you start with a question, you design the experiment to answer it, and then you analyze the data you get to find out what that answer is. Um, and so that's part of the process as well. And we like our students to be familiar with statistics as well before they come into our lab. So that's part, and those are courses, by the way, you would typically do in your second year. Uh, and so that's why, you know, it's usually part way into the second year or third year before a student starts to look attractive. The other part of that is your GPA. Um, there are only so many faculty and any given faculty can only supervise so many students. And a lot of students would like to be involved in research. So that means it's competitive. Um, and we have to decide who are we going to invest our time in. And, and that sounds kind of, I don't know, cold or whatever, but, it, but it's not. I mean, it's just the fact that we, we can only supervise so many students. And so we want to try to supervise the right students. Now, what do we mean by the right students? Well, what we mean is students who maybe have a shot of going on and using the skills we're teaching them. If we're going to teach them how to be researchers, well, we ask ourselves, do we think this person might go on to be a researcher? And the GPA kind of informs that because in order to become a researcher, you, you're going to have to apply and get into a graduate school after your bachelor's. And um, you're going to need you know, a decent GPA to do that. Uh, and so if somebody comes to us and they say, well, I want to do research, but they have like a 1.7 GPA, um, it's probably not the right person for us to invest our time and efforts in. We would probably rather do that with somebody who has a, you know, a 2.7 or especially a 3.7 GPA. So we use the GPA as, you know, giving us a sense of, um, 
this person's potential to go on and use what we're going to teach them. And so often by third year, that's when we will seriously look at students because we have that information in hand. Now, none of that means you should just be sitting there patiently until third year. So I want to introduce you, let's go over here for a second, to Google Scholar. If you haven't run into Google Scholar before, you know, just Google, Google Scholar, you'll get here. Um, it's this, uh, your ability to directly access scientific research. And in fact, one of the things I will argue, so, so what I'm transitioning here to is, okay, let's say you're going to try to get into a lab. How do you do that? Well, remember I said every professor, their lab is kind of a separate household. You have to go knock on the door. <laughs> you literally, you know, either through an email or through an in-person visit, you need to talk to that professor and you need to make a pitch to them. You're pitching yourself. Um, as somebody that, you know, you're asking, will they supervise you to do research? Uh, most students do this pitch in a really bad way. They do it the following. They say, hello, professor so-and-so, my name's whatever. Um, I would like to go on and do research one day. Uh, and I, I know, I know I need some experience to do that. So is there any chance I could work in your lab and get some research experience? That sounds reasonable enough. But let me, let me just re-describe that in a different way that maybe will let you see the problem. Imagine someone came up to you and they said, Hi, I hope to be in a long-term relationship someday. Um, and I, I've not, I haven't had a lot of experience in relationships. So I was hoping you know, maybe we could just have a, a relationship for a few months so that I could get some experience so that I'd be better ready later. Do you want to be in a relationship with that person? <laughs> They want to be in a relationship with you because of something that you can give them that will help them later. That's true, but you want to be in a relationship with someone that wants to be in a relationship with you, right? That is not just practicing for the future, so to speak. And so that's not a very inspirational way um, to approach somebody. A much more inspirational way to approach a professor is to say, hello, professor so-and-so. Um, I know that one of your major research interests is X whatever it is. Maybe it's human relationships, let's say. I myself am very fascinated by this. In fact, I've even looked at a couple of your recent papers and I found those really interesting. Um, you might even say I have some questions about them. Um, that would be kind of cool. But at the very least, you can say, you know what, that, that research is something I find really, really fascinating. I would so much value the opportunity to do research like that with you. You are now telling that professor that you love something they love, right? You're, you're interested in the same thing that they're interested in. And if you do research together, you'll be able to talk about that thing. You're, you're, you're trying to figure it out together. That's what we want as professors. We want students that are engaged in the questions we're engaged in, that enjoy thinking about them, and that can come up with some ideas around them. That's how you want to pitch yourself. Now, how do you do that? Okay, so we, go, we have Google Scholar here. Um, every faculty member, um, you can put in their name, and I'll just do it with myself, just to, just to be obvious. You can put in my name. You should find some profiles. So I'm going to go to me. This is my, my cousin, by the way, and this is probably my cousin too. <laughs> it's one of those names. Everyone that has that name I'm related to somehow. Uh, but let's go to me. And what do you have here? You have all of my papers. That I've that I've done, and you can actually get right to the paper if you want to go in there. Um, wow, well, where's the link to get right to the paper? I guess here. Um, you can eventually, eventually. <laughs> oh, I'm not. I, I don't have my. Um, yeah, I, I'm. I'm logging in from home, so I ha I would have to get my whatever they call it V whatever. I'm not even going to talk about it. Anyway, so it won't get me right to the paper, but you can get right to the paper just by clicking through. You can also do this, by the way, on the year. Click on the year and it will order it from most recent to less recent. So now you can see papers that I have done recently, okay, that I've been involved with recently. Um, and so you can do this with your various professors to kind of say, what are they doing research on? Um, I'd like to know a little bit more about what their research is about. And just doing this a little bit to help you find those people whose work you find fascinating. Now, part of this will be fed by 
your intro psych experience. As you go through intro psych and you learn about different topics, you know, you're going to say, oh, wow, I really enjoyed the memory chapter. That's, I would like to do more research on memory. Um, well, now you can find out, you know, oh, that's one of the things I study along with educational technique technologies, along with develop, developing transferable skills. In fact, memory is what I did more in the past. These are what I'm doing more in the present. Um, but anyway, you can find out what people are studying and you can identify those faculty members who are doing research you genuinely find interesting. Okay, that's step one, because those are the ones you're going to be able to talk to and say, I genuinely find your research interesting. It's got to be honest. It's got to be authentic, right, uh, for it to work. But you'll start to know those faculty. Now, I already told you, those faculty probably won't accept you until third year. So should you just leave them alone till third year? No, <laughs> that's not my recommendation. Maybe as early as first year. But certainly by second year, you should start knocking on doors of those people. Um, and you should do so accepting the potential of rejection. Um, in fact, maybe even anticipating that. But don't, but, but don't be defeated by it. You know, still do your pitch. Get up there and say, hi, Professor So-and-so. I'm whatever. I'm interested in your research. You know, I've read your paper. I think this is really cool. Um, and, and pitch yourself and try to do it. And they might say, well, where are you in the program? And you might say, well, I'm first year or I'm second year. And then they might say, oh, okay, well, very cool. But, you know, really, I'd prefer you to be third year and I'd prefer you to have taken the design course and the stats course. And to which you can say, okay, cool. Thank you. Is, is there anything else I could do to be better prepared um, so that the next time when I come back, because I will come back. Um, and when I do come back, is there any other courses I should be taking or any other, other thing I could do to be more prepared to, to be effective in your lab? And if they say, oh, sure, yeah, if you took this introduction to social psychology course, you know, that's what a lot of my research relates to. So that would prepare you and give you some basics. You say, okay, you accept the rejection, you go away, you show up next year and you say, remember me, you said blah, 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 you suggested I take that course, I took that course, I got an A minus in that course, I found it really interesting. What do you think? All right, so that first ask is setting the table for the second ask, right? It's doing two things, I would, I would suggest to you. First thing is it's getting you used to that uncomfortable um, situation of pitching yourself. You know, it's not comfortable to have to sell yourself to somebody else, but man, is it an important skill. Um, you have to learn to be able to promote yourself and, and the value you bring to various situations. And that's difficult at first. So use those first instances as an opportunity to practice that skill and get comfortable with that skill while you're also setting the seeds for the next year. Um, so that you can come back and you can then, you know, say, hey, I, I was here before. Um, so yes, please start thinking about doing the outreach anytime this year, next year, but do so with the understanding that maybe it, maybe it takes a little while to get that situation that I want to get, but I'm working towards it. And these things I'm doing are not failures. They are not rejections. They are initial steps in a process that eventually is going to get me where I want to get to. Okay. So generally speaking, by the way, I would also, since we're here, um, since we're here and what I mean by here is Google Scholar, let me skip back. So I showed you how you could find out what, what a given uh, instructor might be doing, but you can also, as we go through the course, if there's a topic you found really interesting, um, and you said, Hey, I remember him talking about Wundt and metronomes. I don't know why you would found that particularly interesting, but they're Wundt and metronome. I would like to see some, some papers about that. Well, here we got a bunch of papers related to Wundt's um, metronome study. So anything you learn about in class that you would like to know more about, um, you can just use Google Scholar and, and get to actual scientific articles. Your first peer scholar activity will ask you to read a scientific article, summarize it, do next steps. It's a little difficult at first, but if you start just casually reading things that you find interesting, that will kind of get you more and more comfortable with connecting with the scientific literature and reading it directly. And those are fantastic skills to have as well. Okay. 
I think that's most of what I wanted to say uh, about research right now. Um, it's not for everybody, by the way. You might be watching this and saying, I don't really want to get involved in research. Cool. I mean, that, that's fine. Uh, the people that want to get involved in research are people that are usually imagining doing um, a master's and a PhD potentially down the road, you know, really focusing on that area. It's not for everybody. It shouldn't be for everyone. But if it's for you, then hopefully the advice I gave you will kind of help you find a spot in a lab where you like what they're doing and they like the value that you're bringing to the lab. And that's when everything works out really, really nicely. Okay. One final thing I just remembered. What does this mean working in a lab? It can mean two or three different things. Um, sometimes you might just be volunteering in a lab. Different faculty members will react differently to volunteers. I don't, I don't usually have volunteers in my lab because I find it a weird relationship. Um, if someone's volunteering, I don't feel like I can expect a lot out of them. I just have to take what I get. And if they suddenly disappear on me, I don't feel I have any right to you know, command them back or whatever. And so I find it sort of too loose a relationship. The ways I typically do it, and most professors, is through a course. Uh, and if you look on your uh, timetable or you look in the calendar that's what they call it there are courses like psyc 90 or nroc 90 or psyc 93 or nroc 93 or of course d98 both psy and nro has a d98 so the c90s and c93s are called independent studies courses and so the idea there is you go do research in a lab and you write a little report at the end and you get a grade like a course so it's like taking a course, but your course is working within a lab. Uh, and so, you know, I, I like these because now we all have to, you know, do our parts and make sure the research project comes to life and is successful. Um, and, and, you know, I can expect the student to do certain things. They have certain expectations of what I'll deliver. It just seems like a cleaner way to do it for me. Um, the difference between a C93 or and a C90 is nothing. <laughs> it just means you can do a C90 with one person and a C93 with another person. So you can do multiple independent studies. The D98s are thesis courses. They are also like an independent studies in the sense that you do research, but they also have a class component where we teach you some aspects of, of being a researcher, how to present well, um, you know, how to do ethics, submit ethics forms for what you're doing, et cetera, et cetera. So you learn a little bit more. It's a little bit more formal and it's usually a little bit more your idea. You know, you're doing research on something that, that's more your, come, came from you, whereas the C90 or C93, it might have come from the professor more than you. Uh, but all of those are opportunities. So you can start looking ahead, you know, getting that design course under your belt, getting the stats course under your belt, and then start thinking like, okay, I would like to do a C90 or C93 with somebody. Some students do a C90 or C93 and then a D98. That's a very common path. Okay. Good. I hope that answers a lot of your questions. Um, and yeah, good luck with everything, including getting into a lab at some point. Alrighty. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.